All right, looks like I'm inside now, and the bulbs, they don't look good from here. Right? They're not clear, and it looks like they're, they're darkened inside, so they need to come out. And also, I think I only have a total of three bulbs, and I need one, two, three, four, because I used one for the signal strength meter. So that means I'm going to be missing one, unless I have one lying around here somewhere. Uh, if not, I'll have to run out and get one. Okay, too bad about that, and, um, what is this here? There should be a bulb in the dial indicator, and this might be the stereo indicator bulb here, so I'll have to check that out too. Well, let me go ahead and change two of the bulbs. Looks like I have all the large lights working. I don't know about the small ones yet but that's not that important right now now I'm going to check out other important things like maybe taking a look at the amp section I'm going to clean up here the metal a little bit it seems a little bit dirty and then I will go ahead and throw the front plate on again it's only going to take me a couple minutes and put the knobs back on and then I'll go from there alright I've got the front panel back on. I've got the knobs at least halfway back on. I'm going to pull them off again. Uh, once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and clean them up a little bit so I didn't put them on there totally, totally tight. Um, what I'm going to do now is feed in a sine wave of 1000 Hertz. I'm going to feed it into the aux input and then we're going to see what happens. Now here you can see my dummy load, which I've already hooked up. Of course, the wires from the dummy load are going to the speaker outputs of the receiver. And I also have two scope probes across the dummy load so I can monitor the signal. Now that 1000 hertz sine wave that I'm going to feed in has to be, of course, has to have a certain amplitude. I don't want it to be too high. I don't want to overload anything. I also don't want it to be too low as to where I can't even get a reading with the scope. So I've decided to feed in 150 millivolts. Again, this is going into the aux input and it's 150 millivolts RMS, not peak to peak, which I would be reading off of the scope. And this blue wire, or these blue wires are coming from the um, um, audio generator and right now I'm going to turn up the amplitude here you can see the voltmeter probes are hooked up like this and I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up to 150 millivolts all right we can see now that at the moment I've got the output set up to where it puts out 52 millivolts and I'm going to bring it up to around 150. I put the little light on in the meter so you can see that. So I keep going. And I can stop right at about 149, which is pretty close to 150. Then we just find the aux inputs, which are these two. And my speaker wires here, they just go to the dummy load. About ready to start this unit up to turn it on. And I'm going to be using my variable isolation transformer, which also has an ampere meter um, in it. So I can go ahead and monitor the current that it's drawing. Of course, if I didn't have this, I would just use my dim bulb tester. And if I didn't even have that, I would just go ahead and use... Well, nothing. I would just go ahead and turn the unit on. So, I've got the scope set up now to give me two traces. And the scope is set up for one bolt per division, I think, for yeah, both channels. And the receiver is going to be at, well, it's going to be at um, one-third. The volume is going to be at about one-third. And I'm slowly going to bring up the voltage. 
and we'll see what happens. Okay, I think I need to make an adjustment here. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and I'm bringing up the voltage still. Okay, so that's line voltage now and go ahead and hit the, this scope has got like an auto button, kind of like does everything for you. So we'll take a look at the sine wave and sine wave seems to be, well, halfway okay. And what have we got here? Peak to peak one volt. I think for that one channel. So I'll go ahead and um, bring up the volume all the way and see what happens. Which I can adjust manually like I'm doing now. Or I can use that auto function. I'm right over halfway volume. Keep going. I just want to see what we're going to max out at. What do we got here? Peak to peak 13.8 volts. Um, peak to peak 18 volts. 19 volts. The I don't trust the RMS reading of this uh, scope. So right now I've got 19.4 volts. I think this puts out 11 volts RMS continuous per channel so I'm going to go ahead and try to drive this a little bit more let me go ahead and recheck the uh, the specs on this again because I already forgot now my computer is unfortunately off I would have to boot the thing up and it would just take me too long to pull that file but I think it was 11 watts per channel continuous into 8 ohms but I do have my little Watson voltage peak to peak table here and it says that for example 25 volts peak to peak would mean 10 watts and 27 volts peak to peak that is of course into 8 ohms would mean 12 watts of course this is an oddball number 11 watts so I'm going to go ahead and try to bring it up to 25 and then 27 and see what happens so what do we do okay we go ahead and we turn the amplitude of the audio generator back up and see how high we can go before we get um, some kind of clipping just to make a quick adjustment there um, okay we're already at 24.8 and I think I said 25 would be um, 25 would be 10 watts into an 8 ohm load. So that's 25 right there. So it's putting out these 10 watts. And see if I can't go to 12 watts. That would be 27 volts. Okay, I'm already over that. So. Now to double check things, I've got my Fluke multimeter hooked up in the AC position, of course. And I'm going to see if I was right, if this thing can actually put out 12 watts per channel. Which would be, I think, um, I think it's 9.85 would be 12 watts per channel. Okay, so it doesn't seem to have a problem with doing that. Um... I guess it meets specifications, yeah. Well, at least as far as power output is concerned. Now, in order to bring this video to a close, I'm going to do one final thing. I'm going to set the idling current. Sometimes it might be known as the, the uh, bias idling voltage or something like that, or a particular word combination. Um, but basically, it's all the same thing. And for this, I have to... Um, adjust a certain potentiometer. I've got my screwdriver right on it now 
and of course this is always found on the amplifier board and it's going to be pretty close to the power output transistors and to the emitter resistors which is well they're right back here now I've managed to focus in a little bit more closer I don't think I can go that much closer with this camera um, this back here is for this particular unit here's one of the emitter transistors now the emitter transistors um, they'll basically well or I would say in general have a value of less than one ohm and supposedly the the lower in value of the emitter resistors the better the amplifier now I've managed to focus in a little bit more I'm holding the camera right now and we can see here if we look at the emitter resistor here it says zero and you probably I can't really see it from here but I just read it I think it says 0 0.5 ohms so that's actually a pretty low value so we can guess that we're on the right resistor for this particular unit I just have a schematic I don't have a service manual and the way I'm going to adjust this is I'm just going to go ahead and use a voltmeter I'm not going to hook up an oscilloscope or a distortion meter or anything like that because I realize that most people all they have are voltmeters another thing I would like to point out is that for example we don't directly measure the current since in order to measure the current we would actually have to open the circuit and connect the meter in series with the current flow and in this particular instance it's going to be too much of a hassle for me to do it that way mostly if you have like a service manual they don't expect you to uh, go ahead and open the circuit they expect you to clip a voltmeter across the uh, emitter resistors like I'm doing right now see I've already got the um, the probes of the meter here basically um, hooked up across the emitter resistor now we let the unit warm up of course and um, we don't want any volume turned up so we turn the volume all the way down I don't have anything connected to the inputs of this particular unit um, we really don't want a signal so we want to put the function switch we don't want it on radio and also it would probably be best to use a high level input like if we have like an aux input just put the function switch in the aux position um, I think mine's on the phono now I can go ahead and the phono uh, section is really a very sensitive unit so I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and put it in the function switch in the aux position and here's the reading that we're getting right now I'm going to go ahead and just um, take it down to 10 millivolts which I think is kind of like a safe value the meter of course is in the DC position and we are measuring millivolts now when I set the potentiometer um, I know that my end position of the potentiometer is not going to be for example at, at the extremes it's neither going to be turned all the way down or turned all the way up but somewhere in between now first thing I'm going to do is take this and turn it now if I turn it counterclockwise I'm going to go ahead and actually turn it the current down it means I should get a lower voltage reading so I'll just go ahead for starters and turn it all the way down now I should if I take a look at the meter I should be reading about zero we'll take a look at that real quick and right now it's actually zero then I'm slowly going to go ahead and turn it up emphasis is on slow and then we'll see what happens now just for the fun of it I'm going to go ahead and go completely in the other direction I'm going to go extreme clockwise which means the 
more current should flow. And generally, if you turn the control clockwise, the current will go up. And if you turn it counterclockwise, it'll go down as a general rule. Of course, there can be exceptions. So you have to uh, check this out yourself. Let me go ahead and um, now I'm going all the way. So as high as we can go is about uh, 68, 69 or so, or 70, or even, well, around 70 uh, millivolts. Well, we know that's way too high. I'm going to go ahead and um, bring it down to about 10, and we'll see what position we have. So now I've set that potentiometer, and I've got, well, 10 or 11 millivolts. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Now I will go ahead and do the other side off camera. And then I will basically leave it at that. Well, I may as well do the other side here. I've got the meter already hooked up. And I'll go ahead and turn it counterclockwise again to zero. And then I'll slowly go ahead and bring it back up to... 10 or so. I mean, sometimes you can get a general idea if you have a certain manufacturer and if you get their service manuals and you can kind of see ballpark which range you're shooting for as far as setting the idling current. You know, they're not going to have like, say for example, 10 receivers and you'll see they'll all be set up for around, let's say 10 millivolts to just take a figure and then you're going to have one that suddenly says 75 millivolts or five millivolts. So I've got this one um, almost set up. Okay, now right around 10 millivolts. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. So anyways, that's just how uh, I took care of this in this particular instant. Of course, I could do a lot more and I could do a lot more with these units with this unit, for example, I could take out all the capacitors, check them, swap them, and everything. But I don't know if this particular, this is a realistic, I think this was one of their lower end models. And I would say probably it cost um, under $200, I would say, as when it came out. So I don't know if I could, you know, if I want to put in, if you... Uh, put in $20 worth of capacitors and it's been four hours. I don't know if that's, you know, worth it. You have to make that choice yourself. Anyways, um, thanks for watching.